Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you'll know that in addition to my hobby of being an internet space explorer, I also have a day job working in computer software development. I've done this for like a couple of decades and every now and then you'll have one of those moments where the website is down, everything's crashing and you're the one person that can fix it. It is an incredibly high stakes environment and you know, where everyone is basically relying on you. But it is nothing compared to what happened on Apollo 14. Apollo 14 is the greatest tech support call in the history of computers. On February 5th, 1971, Alan Shepard and uh, Edgar Mitchell were orbiting the moon inside Antares, their lunar excursion module. And while they were going through the pre-descent checklist, it was discovered that the abort switch was occasionally sending the abort signal to the systems on board the spacecraft. There was a short somewhere in the physical switch. They could get rid of the signal by tapping the panel, but it would occasionally come back. This was a real problem because if this signal was triggered during the descent, it would tell the computer to cancel the descent and uh, begin the abort sequence and get them back into a safe orbit. If this happened during the descent, it would basically ruin the entire mission. So they had to be sure this didn't happen. Mission Control started working the problem and they got the person that knew the Apollo Guidance computer best onto the problem. So it was Don Ailes. They had to wake him up in the middle of the night to solve this problem in a couple of hours. Now I've actually seen a couple of other articles on this and they always talk about how Don figured out how to reprogram the computer and save the mission. And this is what we call lies to children. It's glossing over the actual details. First of all, you couldn't reprogram the Apollo guidance computer. All the program opcodes were run from read-only memory. The memory literally had the program woven onto it at the factory and couldn't be changed in flight. It did, however, have two kilowords of erasable storage. Now, the Apollo guidance computer used 15-bit memory locations, which is kind of interesting because, of course, we have 8-bit memory locations in most computers. 16-bit would be the next logical step up, and they did actually have 16 bits internally, but one of the bits was taken away as a parity bit for checking the integrity of the data, and it was not accessible to software. So the actual solution would involve modifying data inside these two kilowords of memory in such a way that the software running would do the right thing, but would still ignore the abort message. The Apollo guidance computer would have several routines that would periodically check input status. One of these, the abort monitor routine, would periodically check the abort signal, which is basically a bit that was set in memory. And if this bit was set, it would then execute the abort routine, replace the existing uh, descent routine with the abort routine. Now, you wouldn't want this to run at any random time. For example, you might be sitting on the surface of the moon and you don't want the abort system to activate. So elsewhere, it could be locked out by setting a bit called let abort, right? Let abort happen. This was again, a single bit that was written into memory and read and written by various parts of the uh, software. So logically, if you could disable this bit, it would actually stop the abort from triggering when you didn't need it to. So back at Mission Control, they came up with a sequence of commands to the computer that would make this happen. Now they couldn't just send this up from Mission Control, they, the astronauts had to actually type it in themselves. So a procedure was uh, sent up and the astronauts had to type this in on the disky, that is the display keyboard, right? So the sequence of commands were verb 25, noun 7, 105, 400, 0. That is all very cryptic, but it actually is pretty easy to step through. So verb 25 is a load command. Noun 7 tells the load command to use three different parameters, which correspond to the first one is the address, that's 105. The second uh, parameter is the bit mask, so that's 400, that's the eighth bit because this is an octal, and zero means set that eighth bit in that register to zero. So it's really easy, they're just going in and they're flipping the bit to zero to make sure that the abort, let abort flag isn't set, and therefore when the abort monitor routine checks it out, it won't trigger the abort. 
Now plugging all these numbers in could take a few seconds and that meant that this simple solution was also a risky one. While the flag could be disabled, there were certain events that would re-enable and one important piece of code, amusingly named Burn Baby Burn by a coder with a sense of humour, was responsible for igniting the engine and it would also re-enable the let abort flag. So in the seconds it would take to punch in this command sequence into the computer, the abort system could activate if the switch closed momentarily. And this would have to be done during one of the times when the crew was most busy managing the spacecraft. If an abort did get initiated early on, it was possible that they could catch it and shut down the procedure and come around for another orbit. But it was risky and they didn't really want to do it this way. With this procedure explained to the crew, their orbit carried the spacecraft to the far side of the moon, signal was lost and they were in the dark for 50 minutes, but back on Earth, Don Ailes and his team continued working the problem. Now when the abort monitor routine normally would find both the abort flag and the let abort flag set, its job would be to switch over the computer from running the descent routines, which would be program 63, to one of the abort routines, which would be program 71 or program 70. So Don's great idea was to convince the computer that it was actually running the abort routines already. Therefore, the abort monitor routine wouldn't switch into those modes because it was already running and it wouldn't want to restart code that was already running. So after they came around the far side of the moon, a new uh, procedure was radioed up to the crew. First of all, they would align the spacecraft for descent and four minutes before the engine was due to fire, they would go in and they would change the state of the computer to make it look like it was running program number 71. So this was done by changing the memory location mode register, right? This is uh, done by verb 21 for load, noun one for address, which is 1010 and value, which is 107. 107, of course, is 71 when you convert it from octal to decimal. So the computer major mode would be set to make it look like it was running the abort sequence. Now they would then go through their usual pre-descent checklist, the engine would fire and then they would be doing a bunch of other stuff. Now from that point on, they would have to then get the computer back into the correct state. So they could then go in and they could reset the let abort flag and then they could reset the mode register. But the problem is that the mode register was actually checked by a few other things. It wasn't just checked by the abort guidance routine. The descent routines would, or sorry, the ignition routines would check it and if it was set, if it was in abort mode, then it would not set uh, all the memory state required for descent. One thing was called the zoom flag. So the zoom flag would have to be set manually because it wasn't available. And uh, secondly, because the zoom flag wasn't set, the engine wouldn't throttle up to 100% thrust. So the changes to the procedure was at 26 seconds after the engine ignition, the crew would manually throttle the engine up to maximum, right? Secondly, they would then at that point, that would be their cue to start typing things in. So they would change the zoom flag first and that would be another single bit being set. So that would be a verb 25 and noun seven Memory location was 101, uh, the bit was 200, so that's the seventh bit, and value one to enable it, bingo. That got them their steering, that got them their throttle control back. The next step was to then reset the let abort flag. So that is, again, verb 25, noun seven, location 105, bit 400, and set that to zero, bingo. Now the let abort flag is disabled, and finally, switch the major mode back from 71 to 63. So verb 21, noun one, uh, address 10, 10, and 77, or 77, right? Because 77 is 63 in octal, right? <laughs> so finally, that got the computer into the correct state for handling the descent, but with the, the let abort flag disabled, and therefore, Don had saved the mission in the greatest tech support call ever, right? 
Now, that wasn't everything. There was a couple of other things to consider. One was that if they really did have to handle an abort, there was two ways they could go about it. One is they could reset the let abort flag by typing all that in, or they could just use the secondary abort computer, which was available on board the Apollo, um, Apollo landers. Many people forget that it was a second computer on board the lunar module that would handle just aborts. It was simpler than the full guidance computer, but it was there for only one situation for when the main computer was having troubles and they needed a backup to get back into orbit. So in the end, Apollo 14 made its landing successfully, thanks to a computer nerd who dug into the code, crafted a hack at short notice and saved a mission which had taken years of effort and billions of dollars. And that, of course, is why this is the greatest tech support call in computer history. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. <laughs> <laughs>